It's Halloween and it's time to make some spooky snacks and some delicious Halloween feasts. Our collection that's coming out very soon is going to be all about how to celebrate Halloween in style. Whether you're hosting a party or just having an intimate family gathering, there are always fun Halloween treats you can make with Thermomix. I'm gonna be showcasing one of the new recipes in our Halloween collection today, but don't worry because all the old favorites are still there. We've just added a few more exciting Halloween recipes for you to try for something new this year. I'm gonna be making our spooky Halloween pizza. The first thing you're going to want to do is to make our basic Thermomix pizza dough, tried and tested, but you're going to color it to your preference for Halloween. So, I have made mine a delightful charcoal black, and I say charcoal because the key ingredient in coloring my lovely midnight black dough is indeed activated charcoal powder. Now, you can get activated charcoal powder on many online retailers or quite a few health shops. It has some health benefits and people use it for all kinds of things, but for us, it's gonna make a beautiful black pizza base. Of course, you could use any food safe food coloring to color your pizza dough any Halloween color you want. Bright pumpkin orange or a lovely sort of poison apple green. Use your imagination and go wild. Now, of course, my dough is lovely and risen. I've made it this morning, it's risen all afternoon, and now it's beautiful, pillowy and soft and ready to be made into our Halloween pizza. So, I've lined my tray, ready to go. Now, of course you could roll it out using a rolling pin and that would work very well, but I find it easiest and the most cleanup friendly to shape my dough directly in its baking tray Speaking of baking, my oven is preheated to 230 degrees, so super hot because that is what is gonna give our dough a lovely rise and a beautiful crust. So whatever size you prefer, I'm making one larger pizza, but you can obviously double the recipe to feed a family or to cater for a party. And I'm just making sure it's sort of an even thickness throughout and I'm leaving a little ridge so that we've got a nice crust. It doesn't have to be perfectly rectangular or circular depending on the tray you're using. In fact, I think for Halloween, it's even better if it's a little bit wonky, a little bit creepy looking. So there we go. Lovely pizza base ready to go. And here I have some beautiful tomato sauce. You can use any of the cookie dough recipes for tomato sauce and you'll get a beautiful result. Mine is just spiced with some oregano, salt, pepper, a little bit of sugar to temper the acid in tomato. I used passata, but if you prefer a chunkier tomato, you can use tinned chopped tomatoes and that would work just as well. So we're just gonna spread that out and then what we're gonna do is we're going to bake the base with just the tomato sauce for 15 minutes at 230 degrees to get that initial bake on the dough so that it's not undercooked once we put all the other fillings in. Well, fillings on top. Toppings on top? <laughs> One of those. So, as much or as little sauce as you like. I've got a generous amount, but not overly much because I still want a lovely crust around the edge. And now this is going into my preheated oven for 15 minutes and I'll see you after that. So as you can see, I can't lift it up because it is absolutely scoldingly hot, but our pizza base has beautifully fluffed up. The tomato sauce has started to get a lovely color to it. It's cooking nicely. So now we're going to decorate. So this is obviously the most fun part of any Halloween food crafting, whatever you're doing is the decoration. So what I've done is I've got one of those lovely big blocks of mozzarella and I've cut them, it, into five millimeter thick strips like this. It's important that you do it lengthways because what you're gonna do is make little mozzarella ghosts. So I've cut my ghost out of some cardboard and as you can see, it's just the right size to fit on top of our slice of mozzarella. And then we're gonna cut around it with a small sharp knife to free our ghost from its mozzarella prison. So let's make sure your knife is very sharp. And if you are making this with children, obviously this might be something that you want the parents to do. There we go. And then we have our little ghost. Obviously it doesn't look exactly like a ghost now, but you will see he will in the end. So we're just gonna do that for the rest of our ghosts and then we'll get back to our decorating. So we've got five lovely little ghosts over here. We're going to give them mouths and noses and eyes very soon. 
But first, we're going to make some delicious olive spiders. So you just need whole black olives for this. Really simple. We're going to cut a couple in half lengthways. There we go. And then, so separate those, make sure you keep them aside. And then what you're gonna do is cut a couple more in half the same way, and then you're gonna cut them like this to get your spider's legs. Obviously we need eight legs per spider, four on each side. But be creative, maybe your spider lost a leg in a tragic Halloween accident. But that's roughly what we're aiming for. So that's that. And then we're going to make some eyes and mouths for our little ghosts. So to make our ghosts eyes and mouths, all you have to do is cut as if you're doing more legs for the spiders, but then cut each of those little legs into tiny little squares. And then we're gonna pierce our ghosts to make little holes so that we can press our eyes and mouths in. So, let's see. Hopefully this is enough. You can always cut more and you can be creative. You could use capers instead of olives to decorate your ghosts or any other little bits of veg like red peppers maybe if you wanted some more colour. So now all you're going to do is pierce your little holes for the eyes and one for the mouth and then you're going to take your bits of olive and press them in so that you have a lovely spooky little ghost with a fun facial expression. Exactly like that. So there we have our Halloween ghosts beautifully arranged on our pizza. Looks amazing so far. And now in between those, we're gonna fit in as many spiders as we can. So let's make a little bit more room over here and I'll show you how to do it. So you pop the body of your spider on and then you just fit in as many legs as you can. There's no specific direction they need to go in. I think this one's only going to have six legs. And it's okay if they overlap slightly with your ghosts. They can be crawling all over your ghosts if you want them to be. Just as long as there's a nice mix of olive ghosts and cheesy mozzarella ghosts, olive spiders rather. They could be ghost spiders. There we go. So this is definitely more of a crafting video than a chatting video, but I hope you'll be as pleased with the results as I'm going to be. So I'm gonna do a few more spiders and then we're gonna pop our pizza into the oven until the ghosts are lovely and melty. So now we've got our lovely ghosts and our spiders beautifully arranged and this is going to go into the oven for another 10 minutes. And then what you're gonna do is if your mozzarella leaks a lot of liquid as it melts, you can take out the pizza and just dab them with a little bit of paper towel just to make sure that moisture doesn't leak into your pizza base and make it soggy. But if they look like they're melting nicely without giving off too much water, you can leave your pizza in there for a full 20 minutes to finish off baking, but keep an eye on it because the mozzarella can brown very quickly and it might not need the full 20 minutes. So I'm gonna pop mine in, fingers crossed, and we'll see what we come out with at the end. So as you can see, our ghosts have gone very melty. If you do want to reassert their facial expressions, you can obviously press more olives into the eyes and mouth area just to make them a little bit more defined, but I'm very happy with them like that and our spiders look fantastic. So now, all that's left to do is to slice it up and try it. And what better to serve it on than my Halloween pizza board, which is absolutely adorable. But first of all, I'm just gonna sprinkle over a little bit of sea salt and a tiny bit of dried oregano. 
just for a final touch of flavor. Just make sure you don't cover up your ghost's faces or your spiders when you're garnishing. There we go. And now he is ready to eat. Let's. Ooh. Crust feels lovely and crunchy. It almost feels a shame to be cutting through our ghosts that we've so painstakingly created, but they do look delicious. And there you have it, a beautiful pillowy crust, delicious multi ghosts and gorgeous little Halloween spiders. Give this recipe a try and try our other new Halloween recipes as well as the old favorites when the collection comes out later this month. Enjoy and post lots of pictures so that we can see what you get up to to celebrate Halloween. Bye guys. Thank you so much for cooking with me today. And if you enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Thermomix UK and Ireland. Thanks so much and see you again soon.